So these need reflexes as if from the stone facade or the neighboring building. And now we'll put this map on the light source. We'll drag and drop it in the slot of our map right here. You can see reflexes appear. So it's really vivid. It's very quick and it's interactive. It's a fake. Hi there, I'm Alex from render.courses and today we'll cover an effect called caustics from facade windows. Now, I saw many photos featuring this effect when the sun hits a building and the sunshine reflects from the windows and then falls on the building facade. So a very nice effect. And sometimes you can use it as an extra kind of creative feature. And I try to make it in my scene and that's what I have. So these neat reflexes as if from the stone facade or the neighboring building in the evening light. And I think it looks pretty nice. Now let's figure out how to create this effect. Recently, the cutout box project posted special window masks, reflections of windows. And as you can see, they have a small collection of these facades, reflexes, which you can use in any of your projects. All right, so now let's go ahead and try to figure out how we can use these textures in our projects to get the most interesting effect. So here we have our scene with our facades. And the first thing that came to my mind was to create light sources and use these maps as a projection. So not to do it in Photoshop, because in Photoshop, we can't achieve the desired effect when light falls on an object and goes around it. Another additional shadow appears and it just starts to look not as realistic as it could have. Now, of course, it's hard to do it in Photoshop. And that's why we need to do it in 3D Max with light sources. I tried to do it using Corona Light and it didn't work out really good because although Corona Light involves the use of some projection maps, if I create a Corona Light, for example, a simple rectangle, of course, we can put a text map texture here, but the result of my tests were not perfect at all. It blurred very much, was very noisy, and rendered for a very long time. And the result was uncontrollable. So that's why we'll use the safe and proven method, which is a standard light sources. So we go to standard and we can use target spot. So let's now try and see what settings it has. Of course, the standard light sources like target spot, omni, and so on are very rarely used when rendering in Karana. But they can be helpful for us to create a certain effects. So I have this scene uh, and there's a building. Here's a camera. And we even have a sun. But the sun shines on the facade and actually this doesn't matter because it's a kind of a fake and we'll make an artificial effect that is well controlled by hand. So create a target spot. So something like this. And let's just pick isolated selection and place the target away from it. 
let's now work with its parameters. The first thing to do is to enable shadows and select Corona shadows here. In this case, Corona render will work correctly with this light source. And we'll take a look at the tabs. We don't need atmospheres, effects, and the intensity tab will set multiplier parameter by default to one for now because I don't know what the brightness will need. The next one is spotlight parameter. Here we can set hotspot and beam and so on. We can set it by default. And we have this light source here, but I can see that the spot shines in different directions so far. And if we apply this in our scene, then this angle, a spread angle and lighting, can be very inconvenient. So let's change this light source to directional and it will shine just straight. So let's set the dimensions for hotspot slash beam and fall off to five by five meters. That is 500 by 500 centimeters. And then we'll adjust this manually in our render project. All right, next, the most important parameter is the map texture, which we'll use for projection. So this should be a projection map. We check projection map box. So you shouldn't confuse this with shadows tab. So we won't use shadows, we'll use projection map. And now we need to put the texture in this light source and it will work like a spotlight kind of a, a movie projector. So a picture will be projected by direct rays onto all objects. Only instead of a film, we'll have the texture of these windows. Now open the material editor. Let's delete everything here and create a map. Well, I take Corona bitmap and load the texture off the window there. So now I have two sets. Sunlight reflect six. Hit open. If I click view image, the full image will open. But as we can see, it has a lot of reserve fields around. And this can be inconvenient. So we can crop our image, shift this frame like this, and limit this image around so we only have the map like this. And now we can overlay the image on the projection map. So we drag and drop it here. Click OK. And now let's test it. And I'll put this light source here where it shines on the facade. So to speed up your workflow, you can disable all of these unnecessary objects. And I'll mark layers that we don't need. Plants, various accessories, vehicles, and so on and so forth. So let's simplify all of this by pressing F10 in the render settings in the scene tab. I'll check the MTL override box and here I have a simple gray material. So now let's move on to the perspective and locate this light source in this way for now so that it shines on our facade and I'll switch to the camera and run interactive in Corona. And I don't use interactive render in separate viewports because it is more convenient to work in a separate window and I can move it, for example, to another monitor. So select interactive and now let's see what happens. Some lost textures, doesn't matter. So here it is, beam appeared and we can already adjust the size of this light source in interactive mode, make it wider. Let's go to the uh, light source settings and increase the size.
So it looks pretty cool. Makes it a very cool effect. And I guess we'll need to raise the light source and the target so that the light shines on our facade. Now, of course, you adjust the position of the light source on your own, depending on your needs. It won't always be at the same angle as our sunshine falls. It's a fake after all, and we just imitate the situation. So you should keep that in mind. We do it to get the most beautiful effect. So let it be that way. And you can also scale the light source. This isn't always recommended when working with Karana Render, but since we have already started working with standard light sources, then already violating all the rules, we can scale it just as well. Why ever not? So we got this narrow streak of light of our light source and the shape of our texture is already looks more like the way it really is. And we can lower the light source a little more. But now, as you can see, we've got a problem. Our light is completely white. So I'd like to imitate evening light so that, you know, to get more of an orange light there. Now, of course, we can just make the texture orange using Photoshop, change its color, but I don't want to change and spoil it. I'd like to keep it the original, so we'll make some small changes with blending, procedural maps in 3D Max, and for this I'll use a standard composite map. So it's in Maps, General tab, select Composite, and this Composite map allows us to blend different maps. And now we select Corona Color Map in the Corona tab. And the point of it is that we can set the color of this map using color temperature by checking the Kelvin box and then set the value. So for example, 4,000 Kelvins. And this way we get ourselves a, a warm sort of light. And if we set it to, let's say 3600, we get this color of our, of light. So now we just need to blend it and let's connect Corona color to the base layer and use Corona map as a mask. So that's the texture of our caustic. So this way, and now we'll put this map on the light source. We'll drag and drop it in the slot of our map right here. We'll use instance. Let's just try it again. Maybe I didn't refresh. I'll restart interactive render. Sometimes it freezes. And now we can see orange kind of light. And let's assume we're fine with this result. We already have some, uh, something to work with. And next we can copy this light source somewhere. And this way we'll sort of will sort of complement this effect. And let's copy this light source along the facade, make it either lower or higher. All right, and also let's put it a little closer. You can see reflexes appear. So it's really vivid, it's very quick and it's interactive. It's a fake, but in this case, we get 
uh, we still get a beautiful artistic effect of these reflexes. So, all right, what else should we add? Now, you can change these reflexes using not the entire set of them, but for example, you can take and you can make separate small light sources, kind of use separate parts of this texture on each of them. And you can also cut off one of these pieces here, one of these parts, if you wanna, and it will be the, the most flexible and most convenient way. And it will definitely make, uh, it's, it's gonna take much more time than I just showed you, but it's well worth it. So that's all. Wish you nice renders and thank you. We'll see you in the next lesson.